students were transferred over and over, year after year, rather than getting into a school and staying in the school for a while. Is that a legitimate criticism? I think it is. Uh, there was a fair amount of, of reassignment of students, uh, sometimes on an annual basis. More recently, they were talking about a, a three-year assignment. And, uh, and that was politically unsustainable. Uh, there's no question about that. I think it's important to, to look at the, the facts, though, which suggest that most of that reassignment had to do with the growth going on in Wake County as opposed to the diversity policy per se. But I think the, the new um, movement toward more choice within the public school system as a way of accommodating both growth and trying to achieve integration uh, is, is a, a, a better path forward. One of the other key criticisms that we heard quite a bit, especially from those who, who ran for the school board and ended up taking the majority, was that by moving the, the struggling students to a bunch of different schools, that you really just hid the fact that there were a lot of students struggling in the Wake County schools. If, if each school had fewer of these students from, from, the, from the tough backgrounds who were performing poorly, then it looked like all the schools were doing better rather than showing that there were a lot of students who the schools were failing. Well, I think that, uh, you know, 20 years ago that criticism could have been accurate. But since 2001, under the No Child Left Behind Act, uh, schools are required to separate out the performance of students based on race and economic status and uh, language, th those sorts of things. And so there's no way to hide how low income or minority students are doing under No Child Left Behind. So if, if that criticism was once valid, it, it no longer is, in my view.